If you'd like coaching, replay analysis, or a personal guide, or you're simply enjoying the content, please consider dropping a coin or two on Patreon. Thank you. These days, Ember is seeing a resurgence in his physical damage playstyle. Something that's been less popular during previous big patch, where most mid embers prefer to go for magic damage. In this video, we'll be exploring the possibilities for the currently trending physical ember, but keep in mind, both builds are still viable and each has its usages. And to answer our viewers' question, each match must be identified individually. In this particular game, I had last pick, and our team severely lacked ways to handle the enemy's Phantom Lancer should the game reach late. And because Ember best deals with illusion heroes by enhancing his Slay of Fist, that is the deciding point for going physical this match versus magical. Because I've picked Ember just for the Lancer, I had to suffer less than ideal mid matchup. And this would happen a lot when you're counter picking not the mid hero but the carry hero. In such cases, the best strategy is to focus on your own farm and experience instead of trying to contest opposing mid's farm. This means less time spent directly in the lane and more resources dedicated to nuking the wave ASAP, healing the damage you will inevitably take, and collecting runes while stacking jungle. If you don't feed too much and hit your levels in a timely manner, you can consider your laning phase to have went even. Remember, we're focusing on efficiency in middle to late game. While Timber will definitely free farm in this matchup, the aspects that make him strong in the lane hardly matter to Ember once the laning phase is over. So, surviving is top priority during laning, and aggression is warranted only when you have a good reason to do so. What did you learn? Now, people were wondering what is the ideal optimization for starting items. And in my opinion, while both Vale and Shrums have great buildup and you can collect individual pieces while laning, both of these items are a bit mediocre when it comes to physical ember. Vale is simply the best if your source of damage is mostly magic throughout the game, and Shrums has lost its mana region component, making it a viable pickup if you plan to group up very early with the team to knock down towers which is usually bought on one of your offlaners anyway. For this reason, I think Rave Bands, the classic stat stick, is the best solution. The agility and attack speed gain will emphasize Ember's right-click potential for faster jungling and harder hitting slay, something which is lacking when going drums or whale. The only problem is that eventually you might have mana problems. In this match, I got lucky and planted an early mango tree, which solved all my mana issues during the early game. If you're not so lucky, however, consider always having spare mangoes in your inventory and raindrops help in that regard too. Another question I got was, how about Treads vs Phase? A pro went Treads in the safe lane and had a good time. I believe in the answer to that question, the keyword is safe lane. In there, you'll spend much more time hitting creeps and trading hits, as all your objectives are spaced relatively close to each other so raw DPS over hit and run tactics can work out just fine. In mid, however, everything flows much more quickly, as you have to be ready to nuke the wave, stack the camp and take the rune, all by yourself with no support helping you with those tasks. And that's what makes movement speed in the middle the superior pickup. And whether you want to go battle or start collecting stats first will depend on the enemy matchup. If you have no trouble taking those last hits and don't care much about physical trading, for example, Amber vs Zeus, feel free to start with two branches and control the runes from the first minute to one. Now, once you reach level 6, your possibilities for map movements open up. Whether you had a good lane or a bad one, it doesn't matter much as Ember has great spell scaling and is a danger just with levels. So try to analyze what is the current status of the side lanes and what can you do to help. The most common rotations are with a good rune and preparations to weaken a lane by minute 10 to help secure the outposts. As always, try to simply walk to the lane instead of teleporting because as soon as you make a kill or the enemy sees you coming, you can return to your farming location as soon as possible without a downtime. This equally applies to both physical and magical ember. 
Of course, if your side lanes are even and can handle the pressure on their own, feel free to spend more time farming yourself than rotating for ganks. Speedy rule of haste. Once you acquire the Maelstrom, that's where you skip from mostly farming and showing up to fights every once in a while, to mostly fighting and only rotating to a nearby camp once in a while. The raw damage to squish your supports from the low cooldown slay is often a deciding factor in fights. In this matchup, not only was I able to catch up from a bad mid lane pretty fast, the other two lanes also did very fine on their own, and together we entered the mid game almost uncontested. Since we're all ahead, there isn't much to discuss regarding mid-game map movements. We're fat, and everywhere we show, we threaten either hero kills or tower takedowns, which is what we systematically achieve with Roshan in between. If, however, the game were to drag on too late, theoretically, their Phantom Lancer would start becoming a serious problem. Further expanding on that imaginary scenario, with a fat Phantom Lancer, on the other side comes equally fat Ember Spirit. By that time, I would have finished my Daedalus, and most likely picked up a Battle Fury. All this combined with a level 25 double slay would ruin PL's day, and would still have a good chance at winning. This match, however, proves to not even go to the late game, so I pick up a Desolator instead, so we can hit the towers better. Another question was asked about Ember and hitting buildings. Truth is, while Deso in such cases is great for it, realistically, in most games you're not hitting towers directly, but you're rather always pushing in some lane in between jungle camps, so the tower, which is in your sights, gets eventually worn down by creeps. In other words, you push waves, which in turn knocks down towers. And the last question we have today is how about blade mail on Ember? I'd say it is highly situational and there's very little scenarios where you would prefer the item but couldn't get it on your offlaner, or unless it flat out cancels a hero such as Windranger no longer engaging you with her ult. And that is all for today's topic. If you got any more Ember questions, feel free to drop them down below, I'll try to include them in the next video. In the meanwhile, I'll leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching. Good luck.
Ha, ha, ha.